All right. Hello everyone and welcome to My Gaming Update episode 4 and I'm doing this just before Christmas so I did this just in time because on Christmas I'm going to be getting some games and there's Boxing Day sales the next day after that and uh, it's just going to be too crazy for me to keep up and be like oh here's this, my stack of games uh, but I um, did it just in time uh, there's only two games here that have been games that I previously owned and I, I went back and played because I've just been so busy uh, in the past two months and I really haven't played a lot of these games or I haven't played them to the extent that I would like to because uh, basically at the end of November it just got so crazy busy with school that I couldn't play anything. It was, it was insane. Between December 1st and December 15th I played two hours of games. That's it. And that was Mario Kart 7. Um, because I was like, oh, I just gotta play at least a little bit because it was into exams and essays and I had no time. And I'm just now starting to get into that uh, place where I have time to play games. So, without further ado, let's go with a game that I talked about last time. Super Monkey Ball uh, 3D, is that what it's called? Yep. Super Monkey Ball 3D, I talked about this last time. The lighting's really bad over there. Well, it's, it's just, it shines too much. I don't know why I'm explaining that. Um, but... Uh, I, I think I had only played a, maybe an hour when I first did my uh, gaming update episode 3. Um, I beat the game, it took me maybe 3 hours, uh, I don't know. Because I there's 7, there's seven worlds and uh, then there's an 8th world once you beat the game technically. Uh, and I beat that as well. I still haven't played the Monkey Fight or Monkey Race. Uh, but just from the 8 worlds that I've played, I don't enjoy this game as much as I did at the beginning. At the first few worlds are really enjoyable and fun, but then after that it's just too much of a challenge or they make it too hard and it doesn't really feel like a challenge or a game. You're just kind of doing it to get to the end of the level. Um, and I just didn't care for it as much. So um, I used to say that it was kind of worth it if you could pick it up for cheap. It's still, uh, I wouldn't say it's worth it if for cheap unless you're a really big fan of the Monkey Ball series. And even then apparently this isn't really what the Monkey Ball series is about. Uh, so yeah, that's um, Super Monkey Ball for you. It's probably my worst game I've played this year, and it's not a terrible game, just not what I expected, uh, along with uh, El Shaddai, uh, which I want to beat at some point in time, just to see if it picks up at any point, even though I really don't think it does. Anywho, another 3DS game is Harvest Moon 3D, uh, The Tale of Two Towns. You can also pick this up for the regular Nintendo DS. Uh, but I wanted to pick it up for the 3DS because it was like, ooh, the first Harvest Moon. I'm a huge Harvest Moon fan. If you've never, never played Harvest Moon, it's like a farming game. Think of Farmville from Facebook if you've never played that. It's just basically you're just a farmer uh, growing crops and uh, raising your animals. The difference with this game, though, is that there's two towns that you can go to. And they have, you can both, you can go to both of them, and like traveling, but you live in one town. And you can move at the end of the month into the next town if you really want to. Uh, the main difference is that one town ha uh, mainly sp specifies in animals and the other town specifies in crops. So that, I thought that was a, a different take on the game uh, because then you're going to have to specifically go into w one town. Although, like I said, you can switch over to the other one and you still have some room to have some animals in the crop village and you still have room for some crops in the animal village, but it's, it's, it's very limited. Uh, and because it's on 3DS or you know a handheld, you don't have a big space anyway. Um, I'm only about an hour in, um, and I really like, the, the world is really big because when you're traveling from one town to the other, it takes quite a bit of time. Uh, and it, it looks nice, it, it not, doesn't look amazing. They don't have any pictures on the back that I can show you. Um, if you're a fan of the Harvest Moon series, maybe pick it up, but I'm, like I said, I'm only about an hour in. I'm enjoying it thus far, but I mean, I enjoyed this game an hour in. I'm enjoying this game more than I did this game, uh, Super Monkey Ball, but still, uh, it's because I'm a, a Harvest Moon fan, so I just like any Harvest Moon game, basically. Um, all right, another game, the other, the other game, uh, that I ha previously had and I went back to, uh, because all these other games uh, are new, uh, is Uncharted 2. Um, I finally got to play it, beat it, loved it. Um, the first Uncharted is good. It, it, I'd probably even say great, uh, but Uncharted 2, man, is this one such, not an improvement, because the first one is still good, but I'd give the first game maybe a 7.5 out of 10. Whereas this one, I would give like 9.0 uh, out of 10. Like, it is 9 out of 10. It, it, it is a damn good game. I never got to play the uh, 
multiplayer, but I really enjoyed the um, single player. Uh, just the story, the music, especially the theme song for Uncharted is so perfect and it, it, it goes along so well with the series and I, I, when I hear that music I always associate with the, with the, uh, the game. Um, it's just, the, the, I really like the platforming because it's in such lush environments and it, it's, it's so different from your regular platforming because while well, you're running around and it's like, a, kind of, think of it as an Indiana Jones uh, game brought to life. That's exactly what this game is. Um, and it's, it's awesome. Um, is there anything else I can say about it? Because I, I also have Uncharted 3 here. Yeah, I'll just go into Uncharted 3. So very good game. It took me about eight hours to beat. Uh, I loved it. Um, I, I do want to go back and play it again and maybe even try the multiplayer at some point. Uh, but not at this point in time because I just have way too many games that I want to play on my plate. And I really want to do a list for uh, best of 2011 games. Alright, next one is Uncharted 3, uh, Drake's Deception. Whew, okay. I'm about seven hours in, so I'm not done the game yet, sadly. Uh, I haven't tried the multiplayer either. But the seven hours that I have played, I would say, are better than Uncharted 2. I am loving the hell out of the single player in this game. It's just everything seems to be so much more improved. There were times in Uncharted 2 where I was like, eh, I don't really want to play this level. It doesn't look interesting. But I have never felt that with Uncharted 3. Um, it's, it's really like more so a movie that is just unfolding and, and the levels are just so much more well designed and they're more, not intricate, but there was like boring levels in here. Uh, whereas this one, it's like the, the environments just seem so much more attractive and they seem, I, I don't know, I'm just enjoying the hell out of this game. It's getting close to like a 10 out of 10. I'm not sure because I haven't beat the game yet, but I am enjoying the hell out of Uncharted 3 and I'm hoping to beat this um, either tonight um, or maybe the day after uh, Christmas because uh, I really want to uh, want to see uh, where they end up with the third of the series. All right, uh, I guess I could talk about this game. All right, Skyrim, <sighs> Elder Scrolls V. Um, I have to put this on the back because if if I continue to play this game, I will not play any other game. So I got about fifty. For the first week that I had it, I put in about 15 hours uh, because I had time to actually invest into some gaming and I was playing this nonstop. I didn't touch anything. Since November 11th, I have not played anything from for the first week that I had this game because I loved the hell out of this. Since then, I was able to put in two more hours and after those two hours, I was like, I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I cannot play this anymore because I, I gotta play so many other games uh, and it's, it's just such... A big improvement from Oblivion. I only played a little bit of Oblivion, but I can already tell that this is just improved on everything. The graphics are amazing. The open world is perfect. Um, a lot of people are experiencing lag, more so with the um, PlayStation 3 version, though. I haven't really experienced any big lag issues or issues that would be like, oh god, what the hell's going on in the game? Uh, so I can't really complain about that. Um, and I, I would say, though, if you have the choice of getting it on the PS3 or the Xbox 360 or even the P the PC go for the PC or Xbox 360 version and stay away from the PS3 version because apparently there are some major like lag times and just uh, horrible glitches in that game um, oh this is like when they gave a game of the year uh, IGAs I was like yep uh, I, I can see why they gave uh, this game uh, game of the year it's the story the the, the gameplay it just really feels as though you're in the land of Skyrim and that you are actually part of this, you know, Middle Earth type of uh, world and, and and the amount of like voice acting, uh, it's just insane. I don't want to talk too much about this game because I do actually want to do an impressions video once I'm 30 hours into the game um, and I, I don't know when I'm able to do that. I hopefully, uh, after Christmas, I can kind of dive back into it after I beat a few other games that I have here and then after Christmas uh, I'll even even more games I had to beat. Oh god I love it. I should have a shirt that says uh, so many games so little time because that's how it honestly feels nowadays uh, especially when you have all three systems and you have the 3DS, the Nintendo DS, the PSP. I don't even touch the PC gaming because I don't have time although Diablo 3 and Starcraft 2 the next expansion is coming out. Ugh. Okay Next one, 
Uh, but Skyrim, definitely pick it up. These last two games, if you do not have them, definitely pick up Uncharted 3 and Skyrim. Uh, if you like, you know, uh, medieval type games, even if you don't like medieval type games, if you like open world type of adventure games, pick it up, give it a shot. Uncharted 3, if you like platforming, more so platforming, but in a 3D environment, um, where there's, it feels like you're in a movie, and you like Indiana Jones, if you like Indiana Jones, check out Uncharted. Unchar get the whole series, uh, but Uncharted 3 at the moment seems to be the best. Okay. Mario Kart 7. Um, I've played about three hours of this now, um, and I want to, that's why I really want to get more hours into this game before I get into anything else. Uh, well, other than a few other games, I, like, I have to beat so many games right now. Uh, I beat the 50cc, I'm working on the 100cc, and I have got to say that Mario Kart 7 is, like, at the moment, my favorite uh, Mario Kart like the game that I've ever played. Um, I generally like the, the handhelds more because, well, there's online, first of all, because, you know, um, I just love playing against my friends um, and, and and then just being having the option of going online um, and having it on the road. But the thing is that with this one, you can fly. Like, you actually get gliders when you go up in the air and you can choose where to go and then you can also go underwater. And the levels, I think that's the main thing is that how, how many tracks do they have on this? Is it 32? I don't even know if they say. I think it's 32. Anyway, mo like most Mario Kart games. Uh, but, like, half of them are new. And the ones that are old have been kind of upgraded so that you can fly around in some of the levels. And they, they just feel different. And all the new, like, levels or tracks are just so much fun than all the other ones. There are some tracks in here that I just love more than any of the previous Mario Karts. It's insane how much more fun these new le levels are. Like you, If you're a fan of Mario Kart and you haven't played one in a while because you had a certain one that was your favorite, like Mario Kart 64 or you know the uh, Super Nintendo one, um, I highly suggest picking up Mario Kart 7 if you have a 3DS. And even if you don't have a 3DS, this game is almost worth it to pick up alone. Like I've only put three hours in and I'm praising the hell out of this game. And I know that I'm gonna be logging in like a good another you know, 10 hours before the end of the year, and then after that, even more so, um, once I start, start settling down uh, with all the other games that I'm going to be playing. Um, so, yeah, definitely pick up Mario Kart 7 if you're a fan of Mario Kart, or racing, or silly kinds of games like that, and it's almost worth the 3DS alone to pick up, and there's so many other games for the 3DS to pick up at this point, so it is worth checking out. <sighs> a game that I have not touched at all. I have not even put it into the this system. Super Mario 3D Land, so I can't really talk about that. That's why I, I can't play Skyrim too much because it'll just take over my life. Um, and I need to play this game because I love, you know, the Super Mario Galaxy uh, games and I love all the Mario Mario games, so I definitely gotta take a look at that game. Uh, another game that I only played about an hour is Halo Anniversary. I'm a huge fan of the Halo series and I love Master Chief and I love being able to go back and play the game, but I only got to play an hour of the multiplayer because I wanted to just check it out. And it feels like Halo Reach. It's basically the exact Halo Reach setup just with Mar um, Mario Kart. Yeah, you can play Mario Kart in Halo. Uh, well, maybe with the mods you could play something similar to that. But anyway, um, yeah, it's like... It just feels like Halo Reach, and I was expecting it to feel like Halo 1 again because I loved Halo 1. Halo 1 and Halo 2 are like my favorite Halo games. Halo 3 was a total disappointment for me. Halo Reach kind of brought it back, but it feel I don't want another game to feel like Halo Reach. I want them to all kind of have a Halo feel to them, but I want them to all feel unique. And this one just feels like Halo Reach, uh, even though it, it is the maps of Halo uh, 1. So, yeah, it's hard for me to say. Um, what I like to think about this game because I haven't played the single player. Maybe the single player is the exact same mechanics as Halo 1, but just the upda updated graphics of Halo Reach, which seems pointless to me because all I'm, I'm uh, I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on this. Uh, but I, I have I've only played an hour and it was only of the multiplayer, and I was drinking a little about that night too. So that might have you know had some kind of influence on uh, what I was thinking about the game. All right. Okay. Probably what. A lot of people, have, I didn't even hear that much about it when it actually happened. It was kind of like building up to when these two games were going to be released, but um, it didn't really, there wasn't really big blowout. Uh, Battlefield 3 and 
Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Uh, I beat both of them, <laughs> thankfully, uh, I was able to beat both of them. And I've put in about two hours into each game for multiplayer, so... Um, I, I enjoy Black Ops more. I'll go with the single players uh, first. The single player in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the first half, I didn't enjoy. I was like, eh, this is kind of boring. It doesn't feel like Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare 1 and 2 are my, like, my favorite single player campaigns, and Black Ops was pretty close to them as well. World at War I completely hated. Um, but Modern Warfare 3, it didn't feel like Modern Warfare until about halfway through the game. And then once you get about halfway through the game, then it completely feels like this is the epic modern warfare that we've been waiting. It has all the characters that you're you're fully invested in and, and that you know of from the past games. And I was like, okay, this is finally modern warfare. This is the epic stuff because in the first two games, modern warfare, they were just so epic. That, you know, I'm thinking of like the things that they added that were different. Like in the second one, I think that's the one that they had like the snowmobiles and like just that entire mission of you being like in the Arctic and it just kind of feels like they're kind of going through all these things. They had this, in this one you were kind of going around where there's a bunch of, um, you're at like uh, the harbor and you're underwater for a while. It was kind of okay, but it just didn't really grip me as the other two games did uh, until about halfway through the game and then it completely felt like Modern Warfare. Uh, the multiplayer in this, I don't enjoy it as much as Black Ops. Black Ops I freaking love the hell out of. Uh, whereas Modern Warfare 3, maybe it's just because I need to get used to them because I've been playing like, I don't know how many hours on Black Ops would probably put in like 50 hours or something like that online um, and only later on in the year um, Whereas this I've only put two so I really don't like the maps. I don't care for the maps um, I think that the main thing is that you have to kind of hide and you have to use strategy more. You can't just run around and shoot people, and that's what I like to do. I don't exactly like to just run around. Well, yes, I, I do actually like just run. That's probably why I like Halo so much, because you just run around. Whoever pulls the trigger first, or whoever has a better shot, wins. <laughs> Whereas um, this, you kind of have to hide uh, and kind of plan out where you're going to go, which isn't bad, but I just need to get used to it, and it's not what I had expected. Battlefield 3. I loved the single player basically throughout the entire game. I, although I actually really enjoyed it more so from the beginning until about three quarters of the way and the ending I caught, thought was just okay, uh, which is kind of the opposite of Modern Warfare, but it was still good. And I, I'd probably say that I enjoyed the single player more in Battlefield 3. It's, it, it's, it's hard because it's like the last half of this is so good and then ah, it's, it's weird. Uh, but anyway, uh, the multiplayer in this does feel fresh, it feels new. I'm still having to try, try to get used to the Battlefield world, but the graphics are so nice in this. I would say that they're better than Modern Warfare, and um, not the graphics are the, the end-all be-all, but they are nicer. I just got a text. Uh, I've been going on for a while then. Yep. Okay. Um, so... That's Battlefield 3. It, it's, it's good. It, if, if I had to recommend which one to pick up first, I would say Battlefield 3, and I also picked up uh, Dead Island and Dirt 3, but I have not tried them out yet. So there you go. That's my gaming update. I will be doing another gaming update at some point, and I think a lot of these games are going to have a return, and I'll be talking about them more in depth. So thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll talk to you all next time.